All right. Let's um let's take a look at a couple uh, equations uh, that are in rectangular form and write them in polar form. So we'll start knowing that y is r sine theta, and that x is r cosine theta, and that we square it. So we'll have an r sine theta equals r squared cosine squared theta. Let's, let's divide both sides by r. And then we'll have sine theta equals r cosine squared theta. Let's divide both sides by cosine squared theta. All right. Now, what's this big mess over here? Well, you can clean this up a little bit, if you like, into the following form. This is the kind of thing you should get in the habit of doing anyway, because you want to try to break this up into functions you can say things about. This is tangent, and of course this is secant. Oh, well, you can't see either of those, can you? Here we go. Equals r. Again, uh, another example of, um, well, part of the reason is we're not familiar with polar coordinates, but, you know, it's really hard to tell from this that we're going to get a parabola. But if you graph this, and I encourage you to do so, that's what you get. Um, just a much more complicated form. All right. Let's try uh, one more. This is a, a simple vertical line in, co in uh, rectangular coordinates. But if we make a substitution, x being r cosine theta for x, then uh, and divide through by cosine, we get r equals 5 secant theta. And this is our polar form. Again, something that's really hard to tell what's going on here. So the radius, the distance of the point from the origin, depends on theta, which you plug into secant, and then multiply by 5. You know, really hard to tell that this is a vertical line. But again, some things aren't uh, expressed very conveniently in polar coordinates. So hopefully those are some good examples. Um, I'll do a couple um, calculus of polar coordinate examples uh, in the next segment.